Hello, this is Jared and welcome to the final part of our HTML5 Canvas drawing application series. So now we've created quite a fully featured app. I mean, uh, we've given the user control of both the radius and the color palette and we've also given them the opportunity to save their images. So, you know, we've got we've got enough features to say that this app is done. But, you know, there's it's not without its flaws and there are certainly other things that we could add if we wanted to. So I thought um, I'll go through some of the things that are not perfect about it and what you could think about adding. So last time we added this save button which let the user save their images so it downloaded it, that was all very nice, so we used the uh, content disposition attachment um, in the HTTP header which was really handy and meant that the user didn't have to right click to save their image. Um, but we do get that sort of annoying pop-up window that that just sticks about. Um, this was only to download the file. Um, and this is not just annoying for the user, but the browser knows that it's going to be annoying. And it tries to block this sort of thing. So, I mean, you've all heard of pop-up blockers and in certain browsers this will block that window as a pop-up. It will see that and think, that ain't cool, and just, you know, it won't, it won't let it through without permission. So how can we get through that and, and why is that doing that? So if we look at our code of what's going on here, basically browsers see window.opens, they're fine as long as they're coming from a user-generated event like um, a click or, you know, a mouse move or something. And so where's this coming from if it's not coming from a user generated event because you know this is attached to the event listener of click on the save button right well it's actually attached to this request or on ready state change of our ajax of our xhr here the xml http request and because this request is done asynchronously it means that it's no longer um connected in JavaScript sites. So this is no longer part of the click event. So up until here, um, and all this outside of this, um, that's all fine. That's all part of the click event. But then this part that's asynchronous, that sort of goes off and does, it own, does its own thing, that's going to um, throw up some warnings because it's trying to open a window and it's not, um, it's not triggered by this user event. So how can we uh, bypass that? I mean, we could, if we wanted to, if we re really wanted to use window open, we could make that a, a two-step process. So we could, um, on, the, on the click, load a URL into a variable or something, and then on the next click, open this window. But there's no nothing to say that we have to use window.open at all. I mean, I only threw that in there last time because it was sort of... Um, we ha we already had it. We had uh, looked at it before, and it was sort of an easy way to show it. There are far better ways, uh, are far better things that we can do to get this download.php page. For example, if we go into our save div, we could create an iframe if we wanted to. Uh, give that an ID of download frame or something and close that off I'm also going to add the uh, hidden attribute here just because it's quick if you're being really good you would um, do that in CSS because I don't think Internet Explorer in every case deals with hidden quite as you as it should um, so you can get rid of the window line and you could open up this download.php in your iframe. So all you'd have to do to do that is to get your document, document get your iframe uh, just using document or get element by ID. So download frame and then target that little source attribute and set that to what we've already been using. So same pretty much the same concept just in an iframe instead. So we can try that out here, draw a gorgeous spiral, put some colour in, lovely, and save it. 
and it won't even open up that annoying window and it will just download straight away so that's actually probably even better for the user um, because you don't end up with that um, window sticking about so that's one really quick improvement that we could make uh, so what other problems are there with our app at the moment so you can see at the moment we've got this this canvas this sort of drawing space and we can go all the way up to the edge of the window and the reason we can do that is because in our main.js we set the, the width and the height of the canvas to the window and width and height but notice that that's only happening when the JavaScript executes and this is not in any sort of function or any sort of loop this is not this is only happening once so if we were to load the page again if we were to load it smaller like this and so at the moment we can go to the full width and height that's all fine but when we drag it out you can see that we can no longer draw out here because you know it's not part of the original width and height so we're sort of stuck there so what we want what we want to do to combat that is to do something like um, use the on resize property of the window and say set that equal to a function and that just does this for you and that would be a really easy thing to do and that's that's going to do what we want it to do but it's also going to have another effect that we don't want it to have so we resize we can see um, the, it's resized the canvas and we can now draw outside where the original window was but it also reset the canvas it, it, it just you know we lost everything and that's really not what we want to happen at all um, so why is that just because it's in the spec the HTML5 canvas spec and so whenever the the canvas is resized the context gets reset so I mean there, there are a few ways you can go about getting the image data and putting it back in after the after the redraw one of them is something called get image data and it, it takes a few parameters it, it sort of it takes a rectangle's worth of image so it's the x and y coordinates of the start point and then the x and y coordinates of the end the bottom right corner of this this rectangle that you want to trace basically and so that would be canvas dot width canvas dot height and then you'd um, I suppose put it back in with put image data and uh, you'd use that object you'd, you'd want to store this in something so like image for example and then use that there and uh, oh, that was so on there. And you can see if we do that, um, then that works a treat. But we still have the issue of the redraw resetting all our properties and stuff. So you'll have to find a way around that. To help you do that, I'm going to introduce you to the official spec for this context. So if you do a quick Google search for W3C context 2D, it'll be the first hit. And you get this really long, boring looking uh, sort of introduction and then the table of contents. This is going to be really useful if you want to sort of look at more into in depth at the canvas and what it can do. Uh, just a sort of a quick browse through the table of contents will tell you if you're going to be interested in what it has to offer. I mean pixel manipulation is a really cool thing in my opinion because I mean you can you can literally take pixel by pixel and analyze them however you want so you can get right down into the maths of it all and create sort of a, an image editing program or something so and I mean it's fairly readable this sort of spec is designed for the people who are implementing the 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 browsers themselves so it's, it's not really designed as like a reference but it's so useful and it tells you exactly how everything works and how everything should work and because it's a spec 
It's um, it's what's going to be used across all the browsers, theoretically anyway. So um, so yeah, it, you can see all the things that um, these things can do. So I was using that get image data method there, which returns an image data object, and then the put image data method that takes in an image data object. So they're very easy to work together. That's actually not the best way you could do that. Um, you can also use the idea of sort of um, a virtual canvas, so you don't necessarily have to have the canvas visible to, to, to use it. So you can say document.create element. You could create a canvas element and just never add it to your um, to your actual DOM. So you can create this canvas element and you can still work with it. You can say um, sort of virtual canvas, call it whatever you want. Uh, work with it just as if it is visible uh, to the user but just n never make it visible. So virtual context and and just and you can sort of write to this to this virtual context and um, because you're never going to resize that. If you if you make that to start with you make that as big as you're ever going to want the canvas to be and then sort of draw to this virtual canvas. That can be uh, a useful way to do things. So I hope that makes sense uh, conceptually. So one feature that maybe our application is lacking slightly is a clear button. Um, uh, I mentioned that resizing the canvas does clear it. So you could take advantage of that and you'll see it a lot in in demos if you if you were to look around. But if you create you could create a function called clear um, you know clear canvas and take in a context and then that can just be um, oh no taking a canvas and you can literally just say canvas width. You don't even have to change the width, just as long as you're calling this um, setter function, this sort of, you're, you're telling JavaScript that you're setting this property. So you can set it to the exact same thing and that will still clear the canvas. So you can see if we draw something here and then clear canvas and our canvas is just called canvas, you can see that that works fine. Um, and you know that's a nice little hack that you can do to clear the canvas really quickly, far quicker than some of the things that you would see in the spec. So in the spec there is a method called clear rect, um, if we just search for that. So what it does basically is clear a certain rect rectangle and one way of clearing the whole canvas would just be to, to clear the rectangle um, with a top left corner of zero, 0, and then the bottom right corner of the width and height of the canvas, which would just clear the entire canvas. Which works fine, but it's so much slower than this method that we've just defined, just literally um, resetting the whole thing. And if you're already doing a resize function and sort of a a restore function for this resize. If you're going to create that anyway, uh, you might as well do that, and um, you're good to go. Obviously, for the clear, you won't have to restore the actual image data, but you would um, probably still want to restore uh, things like the line width and the color. So, you know, where else do we go from here? I mean, there are certainly things you can you can add to this and I really do encourage you to look through this document, uh, do a Google search for it, look through this document, see what you want to add and just try and do it because it's just the best way to really get to grips with all of this API. As a challenge for working with the image on the canvas, I challenge you to use get image data and put image data to form uh, an undo system. So you could have a certain amount of history states, uh, even if that amount be one to start with. 
you could try using context.getImageData and storing that somewhere um, every time, for example, the user lifts their mouse and then uh, redrawing that to the canvas when undo is clicked. So maybe if you're if you feel up for that, give that a shot. You could also um, do something about the radius. So at the moment there's no visual feedback when you're setting the radius, so you can only check the actual size of the radius by drawing. Um, so you could maybe create uh, a div that that shows only when you when you change this value and shows the size of the the uh, perf, the radius <laughs> and so yeah that, that could be also a useful feature uh, if you're more into the PHP side of things you could create a public gallery so this could be more of a sort of community type application and and you can browse other people's images and things like that. There's a whole lot of potential for what you could do with this. So I do encourage you to have a play, see what you can come up with, and definitely, definitely uh, read this, or not not read this document, but you know, skim it at least. Um, yeah, I wouldn't I wouldn't wish reading the whole thing upon anyone, but um, but definitely have a look through and see what. Uh, interests you because there are certainly things that will, uh, things like drawing text and drawing images, compositing and shadows, there's some really cool stuff in there. Um, have a look through and I hope you find something that interests you. So um, over this series we've done a lot and I hope that you found some of it useful. I hope that you find the things that we've covered are useful in other situations as well so I mean we've covered drawing to the canvas not only in in this sense but also you know through code how we can actually draw things like like fill paths and drawing lines and the underlying concepts about how the canvas works so I hope that you find that useful in your further projects. We've also looked at creating DOM elements dynamically with JavaScript with that color palette that we created using the array to make life so much easier for us. And that's a really good practice for just whatever app you're building. Um, try and make things as easy as possible for yourself and for maintaining the app in future. And that's a good example of how you can do that. We've also looked at some sort of more in-depth to in depth topics and we looked at how we could save the canvas data and transport that in, um, in a way that we can save it to a server and then bring it back and download it immediately. So I really hope that those um, concepts all prove handy and I hope this series has given you a glimpse into the power of the canvas and really whet your appetite for building exciting applications in HTML5.